Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing on this Sunday morning? It's great to have you with us again this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. We're glad that you take some of your time out at the beginning of your week, and I just continue to run into people in the grocery store and at the, you know, the rec center and all those things uh, saying, oh, I watch your show on Sunday morning, and I, I usually teasingly say, you, you need a life on Sunday morning if you're up either that early or, you know, or not going to church. And they're just like, so we have a good laugh about it. But we really are glad that you're here. Uh, this morning, uh, we're going to reach down a little bit down into the lower part of our, of our, of our viewing area. We're going to go down uh, toward Neosho. And I, it's always good to have guests from around the larger part of the region. And so we have a guest from Neosho today who does some good work down there with some folks who uh, are trying to figure out how to make some good and, and positive improvements in their lives. So my guest is going to be Zach Norris, who's the Director uh, of Program Development at the Adult and Teen Challenge of Central and Southwest Missouri. And so that is a faith-based organization that basically tries to help people to figure out how to make positive impact in their lives, especially around the area of chemical dependency. So uh, grab that cup of coffee, do what you're going to do, uh, but please stick with us, and we're going to be right back after uh, this Mercy Minute. So stick around. The whole purpose of screening uh, is to catch people who have a significant smoking history early enough where we can do something about it and potentially improve the duration of life. The minimum recommendation for screening is 30 pack years. So usually people who've smoked more than 30 pack years are the ones that we're screening. If we start screening yearly with low dose CT scans, we can reduce the risk of death from lung cancer by 20 to 25 percent. Stage one, two, and three cancers potentially can be cured. When it becomes stage four, the possibility of cure falls significantly. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning here at Faith in Our Hometown. We're going to talk about chemical dependency today and especially how Teen Challenge and Adult Teen, adult mm -hmm. and Teen Challenge, they've changed their whole thing. So, Zach, <laughs> yes, I'm going to let you take care of all that. Sure. But at any rate, Zach Norris, uh, nice to have you with us. Yes, sir. Yes. Hey, so, thank you so hey, much. Hey, my pleasure. It's an honor. So, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you got into this, and then we'll sure. talk about Teen Challenge or Adult and Teen Challenge. Yeah, sure. So, I'm, uh, I'm 33 years old, and... Uh, and have been working with Teen Challenge uh, nearly six years now, and I, yeah. uh, I went through the program myself uh, eight years ago. So you know and of which you speak. I do, there and that, I it's think good. that's it's important. so important, uh, I do especially too. Especially in the, the recovery, uh, the recovery, you know, uh, area. Yeah. Is I think, like, for me to to want to learn Latin or or Hebrew or, or what, learning it from you or, or whomever would be fine. If I wanted to learn Hebrew, I could do it from, from anybody. It wouldn't bother me a bit. It wouldn't have to be a, you know, a Jewish Hebrew speaking man sure. from Israel. Mm -hmm. It just wouldn't. But, but addicts, uh, it, it's interesting that I think maybe because drug addiction is just so insidious and so just awful in, in the places that it takes an addict to, I, I think that they they need to hear certain things from someone that can absolutely understand it and uh, you know and know again, where they've been. I'm not saying that I can't help folks who uh, you know have course, you know who deal with addictions. Of course, yeah, I know you can. But I will say that yeah. they will be much. It will be much easier for them to hear certain things from you sure. because you've walked that road sure. and in those shoes sure. than it would be for me. You sure. know, and my experiences because of what they are, they can hear certain things from me that they would find it harder to hear from you. Sure. So that's, that's a absolutely blessing. right. It's an absolute blessing yep. that we got different people. But I I agree with you wholeheartedly that I think that my, many of my friends who do recovery work mm -hmm. uh, are there because they themselves had to do a little bit of recovery in their sure. own lives, and yeah. that's reality. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure, and I, I like the that all adult and teen challenge has uh, staff from from all different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I really like that. So a not lot. one not one particular background, but from a, right. from a variety of backgrounds. That's yes, great. Sir. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about adult and teen challenge of Central and sure. Southwest Missouri. What are you doing here in this area? Where are you sure. located? What kind of work do you do? Because many of our viewers sure. may never have heard about any of it. Yeah, and I love how how you mentioned that it's changed uh, and that it's adult and teen challenge <laughs> now because. When it started, we're we're 61 years in now, 
uh, the Teen Challenge work that, that David Wilkerson started, Pastor David Wilkerson started um, way back when, but it was a uh, Teen Challenge, and the, the number of calls that, that we got about, um, you know, well, I'd love to give you guys a shot, but I'm 50 years old or so on, or my son is 30, so he's not a teen anymore. What, what could you, I mean, it was what just obvious that, that so many people were confused because the name was so misleading. And so it was a, a shift, <coughs> and it takes a, a lot of people a lot of getting used to, and a lot of people still catch themselves. Cause, but it is adult and teen challenge. Now, just so that people, uh, you know, picking up a, a pamphlet or something, they can see that, well, it is, it is for both. adults, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. And so we have, uh, um, in our region uh, that I work for, the Central and Southwest Missouri uh, region, we've got um, our adult male center in Neosho, Missouri, okay. and then we've got um, a women and children center that's in Clark, Missouri, that's, that's near Columbia, where the, uh, the adult women are able to bring their small children uh, into treatment with them, you know, which is, which is so unique and such a blessing is so many ladies just would never get help because... Well, what are they going to do with their family while they... Absolutely. You can't just kind of like, just kind of, you know, I mean, Absolutely. well, let's put it this way. Some people have to do it that way. They and do. it's a blessing that they've got family or friends, or sure. sometimes even God love in the state, you know, to step in and to sure. help. But it's so much sure. better if we can keep that family all in one Definitely. spot and learn how to do all that stuff Definitely. at the same time. Which and it's great. not exclusively for women that have children. And uh, we do a lot of work um, with the state also and just helping to, to get their kids back. And with the men also working with the state because a lot of, a lot of uh, parents uh, run into issue with that. Sure. And folks love to see these, um, these adults uh, getting help, you know, yeah. and so it's often that the, the workers will be out at the center, you know, and, and the visitations then can happen where a traditional program, they'd be a year, well, ours is a year, you know, so had it not been set up the way it is, they'd be a year without being able to have these supervised visits and so on, but the way that that one is, is set up, you know, they can, they can have these visits while they're there and, and so on, and then you know, transition into being back to full-time parents, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a blessing. So tell me a little bit about your operation in Neosho, because that's sure. going to be the one that's going to interest most of our viewers, because sure. it's right here. This yes, is sir. in our hometown. Okay. So Absolutely so it is. It is. Yes, uh, sir. So in terms of that, like, so how big is the operation? How many folks do you have there? And what's sure. the scope of what you try to do with everybody? Awesome. Awesome. So it's um, about 11 acres that we have there. And... Um, we have uh, 24 students, um, or at least that's what we can hold. I think we're at 20 right this second, but, but, um, but that's what we hold there right now. Um, we've got, you know, uh, seven-ish staff members, you know, some interning, so have been there a short period, some have been there many years, you know, okay. and, um, and it's a really interesting program in that the guys spend a good deal of time learning the, the foundational truths of, of Scripture, you know, so a good chunk of their day is spent just, just learning the Bible, and we have all kinds of, of pastors and guest speakers come in that, that teach these, these classes, some just strictly Bible-type classes, and then some are, are uh, um, like um, truths that, that we need to, to live with um, after the program, like just successful Christian living, for example, mm -hmm. attitudes, you know, personal relationships with others, obedience to man, obedience to God. And, and so some of these are, are week-long classes um, about life skills, but then with um, biblical teachings. And so we'll have speakers and pastors from the community and, and so on come and, and teach these classes. They have chapel um, every day of the week, really, it's some sometimes two days uh, or two times in a day, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we... Uh, yeah, in terms of, I mean, just have whatever you can get arranged and set up, and I'm yeah, sure bringing yeah. in other people from the outside means you got to work around it, time right. schedules and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, we do. But yeah. um, we're so blessed to be in the community that we are where so many people want to want to, to help, help and sure. want to, to give of their time. And it's a well, really 
beautiful place to be. I would hope that all of our viewers would agree on the fact that what we really want to do is to help each other when we can yes. in life. And this is one of those areas where we can help some folks who kind of just got into some struggles with using substances yeah. and things like that. And, you know, how can we help you now that you realize that it's causing all these issues in your life? How can we help you figure out a way forward? How do we can help you yes, figure sir. out a way out? Yes, sir. Yeah. And that's absolutely right, is that they've run into some struggles. And our program is special in that, like I said, that they're... Um, the meat of the morning is, is biblical teaching and so on. And then the afternoon, they'll be doing some work stuff. You know, it could be a, like in the summertime, we have big, huge, beautiful gardens, you know, where they'll, uh, they'll plant and grow and, and reap, uh, you know, a harvest. And they go to, to uh, the Neosho Farmer's Market and, and talk to people and, you know, and sell some produce. And, and while they're while they're putting their hands to the plow, so to speak, I mean, there's so many biblical principles on display there, and, and, sure. and we love that. And, and just um, helping them sort of get in the, the, the um, habit of working consistently again, you know, sure. is special. And so well, the yeah. afternoon, I mean, you know, they're it's just doing like that. Sometimes when you wind up with life being a challenge, you forget some of those basic skills. Yes. And getting back to basics. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That is what, it, what we're doing. So the afternoon could be some work, and then the evening is more more Bible teaching, more yeah. chapels, guest now, speakers. I'm going to ask this so question because Please. again, I uh, you know if I got folks that are watching that may not understand all this now. Ask now, away. You, 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 I'm sure you've had people go through the program that aren't even Christian. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You but know. <laughs> you still share with them the biblical teachings because even yeah. if even if somebody wouldn't necessarily happen to be a full fledged Christian. Those, those principles yeah. and those values that guide so many of the other pieces of the world sometimes yes. can certainly be incorporated into taking a, a, at least a, a, a new look at life. Yes. In that well, regard. I'm so glad that you said that because that's, that's a big thing. I would say uh, half mm -hmm. come in um, believers. Oh, you know, see, I, I, would so I would say it's probably be a little lower half. than I would think in this area. Because a but lot that's okay. of folks just know about us basically because they're church going folk and mm -hmm. they've, you know, Teen Challenge, or Adult and Teen Challenge has come and spoke at their church or their pastor knows or, sure. or so on. But we, um, we have folks come in from all different uh, religious backgrounds. Sure. Could, be, could be any number of things and some just anti-religious, sure. you know, and I, well, firmly. Well, I gotta say, some... I mean, I understand sometimes some anti-religion. Some days I'm anti-religion. Sure. Because, oh. I mean, you know, because I just, you know, religion's not supposed to make you meaner. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but That's religion is not supposed that. to yes, make sir. you meaner. Yes, but it, sir. Some, it seems to have that effect on some people. <laughs> yes, sir. And so I, I, you know, I don't want to spend any time around those people either. Yes, I, sir, you're right. I like <laughs> that. Like, what are you I gonna like do? that. So how do we, uh, you know, in terms of this, so you got folks uh -huh. that are coming in from all these different backgrounds, but all yet you're different. still, you still yeah. in some ways play your game in terms of, and I don't mean a game yeah. in a bad sense, no, but, no, I mean, no, I understand. but in terms of what you're trying to do, yeah, absolutely. you're just like, hey, one of the ways that we figured out is for people to, uh, and I'm sure you talk about connecting with a higher power and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. You know, in terms of doing that, and this is the way that, that we've learned how to do it. And so Absolutely. we're going to share this with you. If you need to adjust it or do what you need to do, go for it. But we're still going to share this stuff with you. Sure, absolutely. And so yeah. we, we're, um, we're real straightforward on, on the phone from the initial phone call that, that, that our whole program is just Jesus Christ. I mean, it's, it's what we do. It's, it's the word yeah. of the Lord. It's all the classes are Bible-based. Well, and. And yeah. so they know, they, they accept that coming, even if they're not. And we say that, we, you don't have to, to believe. For, I mean, a lot of these transformations have come in several months in, a lot yeah. of time, and that's what it takes. Sure. And that word of the Lord, just not return in void, it, we see so evident, so truthful, just day after day. And so Good. at least they're, they're not just surprised, you know, yeah, when they exactly. come in. Well, it, I we're know real we hate to do the old bait and it. switch. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, my guest this morning is Zach Norris. We're going to be right back after a quick break, okay? You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, 
again, thanks for staying with us for another Sunday morning. My guest this morning is Zach Norris, who is the yes, program sir. director of program development for the Adult and Teen Challenge yeah. of Central and Southwest Missouri. Yes, sir. So Zach, sure before am. the break, we were talking a little bit about the fact that you, you try to be very clear with people and very right. honest with people that you run a Christian-based program. We sure do. Uh, yes, but you don't have to be a Christian or even a believer to necessarily you know, right. do that, but you gotta be at least able to be comfortable enough with the fact that that's gonna be part oh, of what's going on. It's kind of like, how do I say this, without you know, running a Catholic hospital like Mercy is. Okay? Sure. Um, we've gotta do things according to certain Catholic principles and things like that, and so there'll be Absolutely. some things we just can't do Absolutely. by our beliefs. Yes, sir. We'll help people figure out where else they wanna do those things, but right. we're not gonna do them because right. they just won't go with the way we do things. But, yes. but we'll treat anybody. Right. You know, we'll, you know, we're not, you know, we're not just saying, oh, you know, because gosh knows if we only treated the Catholics in the area, right. nobody would be there. You know right. what I'm saying? It's very so, similar, very yeah, similar, similar point. Similar thing. Yeah. So, yes, so in terms of this, I, uh, mm -hmm. so, so just kind of, so you've got the program, you've got yeah. the word, you know, you, you do some teaching around that, you do yes. life skills, yes. you do uh, work actually, you know, yeah. and model that, which I think is yeah. great in terms of, uh, work ethic and getting people back into it yeah. and to feel, figuring out how to feed themselves and sustain themselves. Exactly. Um, yes, so sir. when does a person, quote, graduate? When do they know that they're ready for the next step to go back into the world and yeah. try to take it by storm? How do you know that? Great stuff? question. Great question. So to receive a, a certificate of graduation, uh, a fellow's got to be there a year. He's got to do a year. But not only do a year, I mean, he's got to do it the right way. Sure. You know, there's the, the curriculum that, that he's got to finish. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's things, that, levels that, that he's got to meet, you know, uh, standards that he's got to meet before he leaves. Um, to know, really, that he's ready is tough uh, <laughs> for, for our folks. I mean, some of our folks, they, they could be clean for two weeks and they think, Oh, that sure, they're, they're, ready, they're ready, you know, sure. and so they really need to, to lend themselves uh, to, uh, to their prayer life, uh, you know, and letting, letting the, the Lord guide them as to when they're ready. And they really have to, they really have to be able to, to submit to, to their, their counselors and so on. And, and we have, um, we have a, a, a lot of really good teachers and, and counselors there that, that help to speak into their lives and help them to, to, uh, to formulate the, the plan, the, the exit strategy. You know, for me, I would say someone's never really ready to leave until they've, they've tried interning. I, I mm. always suggest that everybody, everybody do an internship uh, with a, a center because I feel like, um, like we, need, um, we need a little bit of of, uh, of guidance and help while we're outside of the, the walls of the program. Like when you were able to, to come and go uh, as you please, more or less, when you're able to, ha to have your cell phone again, when you're able to, you know, to go back home uh, if you wanted to for the weekend, you, you still need um, some accountability uh, mm -hmm. embedded in your life, even if it's been a year that you've been uh, that you've been locked away in a program. I mean, even even so, it, we need some accountability still as as well, I my mean, it's like, types of people. It's like learning how to ride a bike. I mean, you know, most of us didn't sure. go straight from the trike to the you know to the two wheeler without yes, losing some skin along the way. Yes, which sir. basically <laughs> means you know let's we, let's have some training wheels. Let's yeah. help people to do that because really what we're yeah. talking about is again helping people to succeed. And sometimes. It is by holding the hand uh, a little bit more, not necessarily yeah. physically, but emotionally, or you know, just in yeah. terms of that, you can help somebody yeah. a little bit more than yeah. if you just kind of just say, okay, you're done now, get out. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and so there's only, um, you know, some folks, uh, like for myself, a after graduating, I, I had such a desire to, to try, um, you know, to help folks that were going through the same thing that I had such a desire to, to try to, you know, help to, to teach the, the word to the men. I had such a desire to do that. Some folks um, have a desire and a need. In a lot of cases, they have bills, they have a, they've got families. Uh, a lot of folks need to, to go back to work, uh, mm. traditional work, sure. and, uh, and get back to it. And um, we're, we're working on, on ways to do uh, what we call a reentry program um, locally where we'd have an option for our men to, to still be under the, the Adult and Teen Challenge covering, you know, with a, a house run by an Adult and Teen Challenge uh, staff member, where we can help, uh, 
they can still go to work and they can they can pay a rent um, you know they, they can they can work their job and they can drive uh, to and from and so on um, but we can help to to, to teach them to budget and to tithe and so on and to, to be responsible for their money. We would have, uh, you know, very strict rules regarding dating and so on because we find that the huge, huge problem with our graduates is, is one, the opposite sex. Uh, after being locked away from, for a year, the opposite sex is typically uh, one of the first problems and that first paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, after being you know locked away for right. a year, that first paycheck can be a problem, and so to still have some some guidance and some accountability in their sure. lives to help them uh, that 's huge and so that's that 's something we 're looking into to to help uh, even further after the the program well again, like we were saying training wheels it's training just wheels. good just to kinda yes. just get into it and ease into it yeah you mess yourself up now recently yeah. uh, we were talking before the show yeah. um, about uh, that study that was done by evangel oh uh, in terms of uh, of your success rate in other centers yes. like yours around yeah. the, uh, around the country yeah what is it there's what are you, how many you got we've got roughly 250 in America and 1300 worldwide wow that's and that's great. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about your success. Brag a little bit on sure. yourself. What did the sure. study? What did the study <laughs> sure. show you? Yeah. What did, what did, what have we got in well, terms of uh, empirical data that yeah. says you're doing good work? And it's so important to do that. You know, we we have to um, we have to make pleas to our our donors and to, to sure. churches, and so we we have to do this all, all the time. And the number that we were using um, was based off a study that was done uh, in the, the early mid 90s and but we were still using that number you know which is um, which is an we old could number do now. better absolutely <laughs> which is yeah an old number now. yeah right. we we can do much better and so um, you know a tremendous uh, amount of effort and and finance and oversight and, and work had to come into to getting this number and sure. to and to uh, to getting a hold of all these all these folks, and so our national headquarters, um, Adult and Teen Challenge USA, uh, were the ones that that commissioned this uh, of Evangel University um, to carry it out, and then of course all these centers uh, took part in it. Um, but what we found is that of the students who've completed the program, 78% uh, of them are still uh, successful. 12 to 24 months after the program, which is really huge. I mean, uh, these, uh, the secular programs, um, you know, though, though surely some are helped, uh, it's a, a very small number typically, and it's usually very soon after the program that they uh, find themselves in, in relapse. And so this, this number is, uh, is huge, and it, it just shows that um, the faith component of our program is really what's is really what's given it the shot in the arm. Well, and I think that I mean there's probably multiple reasons for that. I'm going to guess that one of them is the fact that it's a year long. Yes. And you know yes. that you're committed to it for that that period of time. You yes. can't quote graduate until. And many of those other programs are all are much shorter. Yes, uh, you've got Absolutely. the investment of of a year worth of of helping people rethink things, yes. where sometimes people only get you know uh, you know sixty days yeah, in their spot or, or less you know yeah. yeah, and those are those things would all uh, have a tendency to do that. But I just think yes. the blessing for you guys, especially, is knowing that the hard work and the effort that you're doing is working. You know, we're almost yes, you know almost eighty percent, three quarters. Yeah, to, you know, three quarters uh, at least. Are or are not having you know more you know I'm, I shouldn't say they're yeah. not going to have struggles because you know they're going to have struggles. Oh but, sure, but they're still yeah. succeeding with what they learned through the program. Yes, sir. Two years later. Yeah, and and another number from that study is that um, ninety three percent of them have experienced no new legal issues, which is huge for yeah. our students or, or clients yeah. or so on. I which mean is great. that is a that's phenomenal well, for them. And I think that that makes people who watch programs like this go, okay, well, yes. if I was looking to do something or to help them, Such a good I point. can look at that and go, hey, it's good for the community. Yeah. I mean, because all that's good for all of us. It I is. Mean, you know, that you've it got is all your, good your for your the community. Go through, yeah. And they're not having uh, you know, new legal issues. Well, that's almost right. like a 93%. That's a pretty good, right. that's an A. 
<laughs> yes, that's an A sir. in most classrooms. We'll take it. You know, we'll that's an A in most it. classrooms, it basically says. Yes, now, sir. again, it's not foolproof, and it's no, still no. based yeah. upon the hard work that the that your that your students, as you call them, which I think that's a great name for that, that is, in terms yeah, of I like it. I like that, too. Uh, you know, yes, uh, but, you're, but that your students are learning while they're there, those new life skills and everything, are yes, you know, that you're getting a 93% you know, that two years later they still have not had any issues in terms of the law. I think that that's a, that's a great thing for a community. It's a great yes, thing sir. for a community to know. It's a great yes, thing, thing for a community to hear. Yes, sir. It's a good thing for us to support uh, in that I regard. Yes, so uh, the, um, the, big, the big question here would be of what, how would people help you if they wanted to help you? Sure. Well, there's a lot of different ways. Like I mentioned, like we were speaking about with the work part, um, you know, say a, fo uh, a family needed to move or something, we have a, a big moving truck, you know, so they could call us and we would have a, a staff member and some students that could, you know, literally move them from point A to point B so they can kind of, you know, rent us for the day, sure. you know, or, uh -huh. uh, or uh, in the summertime they need their lawns mowed, you know, we're, we're glad to do it. Uh, the winter time they need some wood cut, you know, we cut it's wood mostly, and, and this is mostly stuff the, like that. And, the mo and you'd stay mostly in the, near the Neosho area? But yes, sir, you're right. Yeah, okay, I for just want to make sure, for the, you know, because yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. But just, I mean, just for the most part, uh, we're, um, we're members of the Joplin uh, Chamber. Uh, you know, and so we do some things there. Uh, we'll okay. be at the Joplin Business Expo uh, this month and okay. some things like that. All right. But um, folks can sure uh, go onto the website. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them the website, but we're oh, going to go ahead. I'll give them the website and the wrap Great. up. But right now, we're going to have to break for Mercy yes, Minute. Sir. So, Zach, thanks for being with us. Yes, sir. We'll thanks be right so back much. after this Mercy Minute. It was silly to be so um, uh, dreading it so much because uh, it was really no big deal. There was no pain afterwards. Um, I was really, really hungry, so I got to have whatever I wanted to have for, for lunch. Um, but, you know, the rest of the day I just slept and, and there was no pain and went to work the next day. Every day that I opened up my refrigerator and saw that, ref that referral on my refrigerator, I just dreaded having to go through it. And, and now I just kind of laugh about it because it just, it was no big deal. And knowing it's behind me, I just don't have to worry about it. Well, my husband and I, we do a lot of riding and we kind of cram everything into the weekends, but uh, eventually, um, you know, we, we'd like to, once we retire, we want to be able to go um, uh, on vacations on our bikes and, and, and go, go riding on weekends a lot more, so we have a lot to look forward to. Okay, well again, thanks for joining us this Sunday morning. Real quickly, if you want to be in touch with uh, teen, uh, Adult and Teen Challenge, TCIMO, TCIMO.org, uh, if you're gonna look on the web. Uh, you can help by hiring for jobs, having people come speak at your church, giving donations if you like, uh, ideas that you could do as fundraisers, business owners, sponsoring corporately, any of those things, but just, Keep those folks in mind, especially if you're in the Neosho area. Uh, just help people help themselves to make a difference in their lives. Thanks, and come back and see us again next week for Faith in Our Hometown. We're always humbled that you join us for a Sunday morning of conversation. So God bless and have a great Sunday. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.